Tally Ho Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London telling you fascinating facts. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like these videos, and also hit the little bell, because that will notify you when I upload a new one. For some reason, YouTube has been unsubscribing people from my channel. I don't know why, so just check that you're still subscribed. Now, today we're in Barking. Um, Barking comes from Berreka, which is Anglo-Saxon, for the village among the birch trees. And they've had a railway here since 1854. This, um, I mean, didn't look like that. There used to be a level crossing over here, and um, it was all completely different in those days. That train station these days is run by Trenitalia for some reason. I don't know why. And that might explain why it's based on the Termini station in Rome. Do you okay. recognise it? So, do you recognise it at all? You wouldn't know from looking at the inside. It's being renovated. But yeah, it has, was inspired by that. I remember the first time I walked down Station Parade. It was a dull day and the clouds were hanging round the clock tower. From around the 8th century, this whole area, all stretching up to Dagenham and Ilford, including Barking, it was all one big manor. You know, they had a law of the manor and everything. And the police in London started in 1829, the Metropolitan Police. Well, I think the London police didn't start here until around 1839, I believe. But they had the K Division here, and they had these nice tailcoats and jackets with high collars. And they could even add an extra four-inch leather high collar to stop people from garroting them. And they were armed with a cutlass, a truncheon and a rattle. <laughs> I don't know what kind of a rattle, <laughs> just in case they go to a football match, I suppose. Anyway, it's a, it's a pity to see police stations no longer being used as police stations. Hello there, hello. <laughs> Older viewers might refer to this corner as Blake's Corner. It's called Blake's Corner because Arthur Blake started an ironmongery here in 1911. It used to be a nice building with a clock tower, but back in the war, Barking was heavily bombed. And one fellow called Sid Westbrook recalls wandering along Ripple Road here and a bomb hitting that and a policeman diving to rescue him from all the shrapnel and everything. And he talks about how the uh, big ta there was the, the tower on top which just remained perched perfectly on top of a pile of rubble. Uh, a bit like King Louis of the Apes in, uh, in, uh, in the Jungle Book, you know? That, you know? <laughs> At the end, all he's got is that one stone above his head. And an old man told me a story about the war and how an air raid had knocked down the building and time stood still when the twilight bombs get... Burned. Look at this sign. You're an artist. This is a house for artists. These, these buildings here... I quite like the window, the design there. It looks like, a, looks like a game I used to have where you had to put the round ball through the round hole and the square thing through the square. You know, but this has been specifically built for, I don't know, struggling artists, I suppose. I don't know. I mean, uh, I think it opens up inside, sort of flats that open up into big workspaces and all okay. sorts of stuff that I don't quite understand. I mean, the, the sculpture in the garden there is done by Grayson Perry. That's a, a Grayson Perry sculpture. And the dogs were barking in the night and the moon shining bright when the devil took a number of the good girls from the abbey. Do you know what a Gurdwara is, Simon? Well, I do Gurdwara. now. Yes, yeah. there's the Sikh, Sikh temple. It was, uh, this is the second oldest Gurdwara in the country. But uh, It was purchased in 1970. Uh, originally, it was a Quaker's house. It was a house of Quakers before. Um, but this is, the, this is the old bit. You look around the other side, it's really quite impressive, actually. Um, let's go around the other side. Amazing. It's a beautiful building now. They've got these references to things of the area here on the wall, you see? So that's, that's Essex, the Essex badge, the three swords there. Is it Cutlass? I don't know. I remember that because I had it on my um, Panini cricket <laughs> album. That was the Essex cricket Four. badge. Um, oh, look at, the, look at that. You've got a, got a tower there. Look, oh, this, this will be the Barking Smack which is the, the fishing fleet. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute. So you've got some fishing fleets, Elizabeth Fry. Look at all these uh, references to the area. No horses. Look at that nice school over there. Those wonderful Victorian looking schools. We have to film them from a distance. So you can't go around filming schools these days, but I do like the way they look. For children, I always felt they must be quite foreboding, scary-looking yeah. places, these lugubrious <laughs> buildings, you know. The Hammer Horror. Yeah, Dickensian type. But uh, then again, in those days, it's probably a much better place to go than a workhouse or something. Oh, look, at it's so sad. Look at another sad sight, the Jolly Fisherman pub. Mm -hmm. Are we look. popping in, are we? No, are we look, it's... Oh, we, we would do, but look. All oh, boarded up, all Bless boarded you. up. And the dogs were barking in the night and the moon was shining bright when the devil took a number of the good girls 
from the Abbey. I didn't look this up, I spotted this, I found this myself when walking past. Edward VIII. Look, that's an Edward VIII post box. Oh. 20, 30, 100 points, Marty, 100 gigawatts <laughs> for, for the Edward VIII post box. You're quite, you're quite unusual to spot these. And look at the state it's in. So I think that a lot of people see the ER and they just think that's that's Elizabeth Regina. Like they, they just think, and it's hard to make up the, the number, so they probably just think that think that's Queen Elizabeth II, E R two, but it's not. It's a V one one one. Edward the Eighth, of course, was the king who abdicated in the nineteen thirties. So, points to me. Points to me. Look at that rust on there. Come on, they need to sort that out. When the Quakers used to pray here, dear Elizabeth saved her time for. This was a Quaker burial ground, and look, Elizabeth Fry. She's a prison reformer, prison reformer and Quaker. She was known as the angel of prisons. Elizabeth Fry campaigned to improve conditions for women in London's notorious Newgate prison. She travelled extensively, promoting penal reform, and went on to become Europe's principal campaigner for inmates' rights. Sorry, is she, she actually buried right here? Well, or that's what it says. saying that she's buried in a... Well, that's what it says. It says she, this was the burial Ooh, ground, oh, wow. so okay. no need to dig her up, I suppose. Ooh. She's around here. Julie, look how many bollards there are. Yeah. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> the bollard city. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what they're worried about. I don't, I don't know. want people, people driving in there, yeah. I suppose. Well, she left home for heaven and the pilgrim stood at her grave. Well, the good keep giving and the bad keep taking and the saints See, we saw one of these in Walthamstow. Do you remember the Walthamstow video, Simon? It used to be Burton's menswear. Um, the fellow by the name of Mesh David Ozinski, he arrived in London around 1900, fleeing the pogroms in Russia. He was only 15 years of age. He changed his name to Montague Burton. And then he started up these Burton's department stores where he specialised in garments manufactured for measurement rather than made to measure. And they became very popular and he became known as the tailor of taste. There are about 400 of these stores all over England. And I like this, this is obviously the kind of quite art deco, isn't it? Look at that, those nice elephants and stuff. It's a staple of many high streets, isn't it? That? Yeah, they had loads of them. And it's from Burton's that we get a lot of expressions. When you trip over, my, my, my mum used to say, oh, I, really, I nearly went for a Burton. To go for a Burton, it means to sort of to trip over or something. Or to go for going for a Burton, and um, and also the full Monty. Oh, I'm going to go for the full Monty because his name was Montague Burton. That comes from Burton's menswear. Yeah, they all need restoring. They do. Look at that. They could do, couldn't they? I mean, that one. This one's not that young either. Look, King George the Sixth. That one. It's really nice to see these sort of things. You've still got some quite nice buildings here. I mean, the market here, this was held by royal charter since around 1162. They, uh, they, they were allowed to hold a market. So they've been doing a market here for the last almost thousand years. And the dogs were barking in the night And the moon was shining bright When the devil took a number of the good girls 400 years, fishing was a really important part of barking. In fact, for 200 years, it had the biggest fishing fleet in England. There was a fellow called Skimgore Hewitt back in 1797. He uh, established a short blue fishing fleet, and it was based here, I think. They used to use these smacks, a the barking smack. It was a kind of like a fishing vessel. And, uh, and then later on, they started to use these other techniques where they had a, a well inside the boat so they could go further out and they could keep the fish fresh. So the fish would still be swimming around inside the boat as they brought them back. And then later on, I think he pioneered using other techniques, like things like sort of using ice and things like that. Flick, damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a scientist. Let's go over here. But uh, just opposite here is what used to be the town hall. And then it tur got turned into a magistrate's court. They used to have a Tudor magistrate's court, but that flattened or something. Lovely building, that. This whole wall here, when you first look at it, you probably think it's something really old, you know, an old ancient ruin or something. But actually, it's, um, it was built by the people from the Further Education College, brickies and stuff. It's a piece of art. You know, they've used various different types of brick design and work, and, and some parts of old manor houses, I think, from the area. They used to have four manor houses in, in Barking, but three of them got knocked down. They've only got one left. 
The steps certainly look like they're from a manor house, don't they? This reminds me of that two Ronnie sketch. I'm uh, Mr. Starling of Starling Styling, wanting, wanting Mr. Ponting, a Ponting Punting. Hopping through whopping, shooting through tooting, parking and barking. The parking and barking is shocking. No joking, no smoking. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, anyway, now look, Barking Town Hall. Um, I think we should pop inside and see if we can get hold of the leader, leader of the council. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come in. Thanks very much. I'm Darren Rodwell. I'm a borough boy, if you like. I've lived here all my life, but I'm also the council leader for Barking and Dagnum. And welcome to my little office. Look at this. Look at that. We said that's a kind of proper old, uh, the, the, the bars that heat up. This room is actually original to the building. Um, so this was designed in 37, but built in 51. And actually we've got all the information going back to when we were just a simple little borough council. And this takes us back to the antisocial behavior by the fish netting women of the borough at the turn of the 20th century. You had a spot uh, of trouble with the uh, fishnet makers. We did. So the, <laughs> the women used to come down from Glasgow and they loved their gin, as I read in these books. So the biggest antisocial behaviour we used to have was the women fighting when the ships were out, because we had the London fishing fleet. Are you a Hammers fan? Is of the course. Hammers yeah. Stadium there. Barking and Dagnum won the World Cup for the country with a few Northerners, but the management and the leadership on the pitch came from Bobby Moore and Sir Alf Ramsey. Bobby Moore a Barking lad, Sir Alf Ramsey a Dagnum lad. This is obviously the Royal Crest. They've got the lion and the unicorn here. This was in the second oldest courthouse in the land, Barking. Originally Elizabeth I, you can see the E behind the A, it's actually recognised as Queen Anne, which was after Elizabeth. Oh, I see. Before so that's why that, it was recycled because it was Elizabeth I. <laughs> it was the court <laughs> it's of like Elizabeth It's they, like they've painted over it. Look at that, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Courtroom. I don't like the look of this. Uh, Mr. Rodwell, uh, I put it to you that on the night in question, you were seen singing I'm Figure Forever and Blowing Bubbles oh, in a kebab shop. Order, order, order. I do have to say, I'm actually Councillor Rodwell. This isn't a courthouse, this is the town hall. I'll get my coat. Bobby Moore. Oh, Bobby, as a known as Robert. Yes. Why does it say Chelsea? Because that's his middle name. Dei gratia probemur rebus. How's your Latin, Darren? In, in God we are judged by our deeds. That's what I thought it said. <laughs> in Dagnum, it means stop waffling and get on with the work. <laughs> the mace. This is the piece of kit that goes with the first citizen, who is the mayor. The mayor's not in situ today. So we can muck about. <laughs> well, we do. Get away, Mr Blackadder. That's cat! It's cat! <laughs> oh, that is the mace bear of his jacket. Uh, how do I look? I mean, you never know. I might stab one day. I reckon if I actually stood for mayor, I reckon I'd get a few, a few, a few votes. So I? I'm the mace bearer. You are. I'm going to do a song about that man. Down in Dagenham, <laughs> the mace bearer walks. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Darren, I don't bring her. Like, Down in Dagenham. <laughs> This is the, st the back of the, th the, th the Broadway Theatre. Let's walk around the other side. They have all sorts of famous people who have performed here. Most notably, Neil Young recorded parts of his Harvest album in there. A couple of the songs from his famous Harvest Did album he, really? he recorded in there. Yeah, with the London Symphony Orchestra. Oh, yes, yes, yeah? that's right, London Symphony There's Orchestra. A lamp, all the ladies are barking. It lights up the curfew tower. Let's ring the bells for the girls who stood up. These three lamps is where the suffragettes, the working class suffragettes, used to meet with the suffragettes to go off and fight to the right to vote. So a suffragette? So a suffragette is a working class suffragette. The oh, middle right. class were the suffragettes, the working class were a suffragette. And, I never and, heard that word being used before. Well, that's because you're not in a working class area like, like we are in Barking Right, so all today. those, um, the, the main ones that we've got, Pankhurst yeah. and all them, they're middle they're, class. They're middle class yeah. right. And okay. that's great. Pankhurst used to come here and have tea yeah. with Annie Oggard. Annie Oggard was the last surviving suffragette, suffragette who died in 1997. So we've had some really famous women from the borough. If we go to the first woman playwright, St Ethelberg, she was the abbess of Barking, through to Mary Wolvencroft, 
you would know she wrote the book about equality between men and women. She was a barking lass and you'll know her daughter, Mary Shelley. That's right. Frankenstein, she was a barking girl too. You rings the bells and sing. You ring the bells to your own girl The curfew tower, otherwise known as Firebell Gate. This is uh, medieval. It's the, it's the only surviving gateway to the medieval abbey, which we'll see in a minute, but well, actually it's been knocked down now. But yeah, this is the only surviving part. I mean, some parts of it date from 14th century. So of course it's called Firebell Gate, presumably because uh, it was the curfew tower. And a curfew was when people would ring the bell and tell people to put out their fires or their candles or whatever, so that places don't get burnt down, what have you. And curfew comes from the French couvre le feu, meaning cover your fire, put out your fire. That's Ooh. why that's where that word comes from. St. Margaret's Church. Captain Cook got married in here. <laughs> I love it. I love Captain Cook. I mean stuff to do. I just find the find the, the history of seafaring so exciting. And, and more more recently, Bobby Moore, who lifted the World Cup for England. Harry Redknapp, I think, got married in there. Paul Ince. When King Henry VIII came along and he knocked down the abbey over there. This part survived. This is painted. The only one in the graveyard. Oh, it is as well, yeah. Yes. Well, I know is he's a very senior person in the Corporation of London, and part of the decree when he died was his tomb needed to be painted every number of years, and that's why it's the only one being painted. Thomas. Is it, M is it Merton? Is it, Neptune. Neptune. No, no Neptune. 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 Thomas go. Neptune. Forever of this parish, who departed this life on the 26th day of September. Oh, it's something to do with like the worshipful... 1724. Worshipful company of poulterers. So he just kept, kept chickens. Poulter, <laughs> poulterers are chickens, yes, aren't they? they are. So the Barking Abbey, which we could, you can see a picture of it inside uh, St Margaret's Church there, it was here. Barking was part of the, the second largest estate in the country. It went all the way from, I believe, South End all the way down to like the Tower of London. Barking Abbey was founded in the year 666 by a monk called Erkenwald for his sister Ethelberger. It was large enough to accommodate the new William the Conqueror and his followers. So William the Conqueror, after he defeated King Harold, he stayed here whilst the Tower of London was being built. It was big enough for him and all his cronies. Or princess. Then. She's in charge of the nunnery. She's oh, in charge of the place. And Barking was the home of health and education. That's why William the Conqueror came here. He went Canterbury, then Barking. He then stayed here for the two years, whilst he then got the agreement in 1067 for the city to manage itself. But he wasn't allowed into the city, so he built the tower next to it on Barkin's lands to oversee the square mile, as we know today. Get thee to a nunnery. <laughs> <laughs> the expression to be barking mad, they say, comes from the fact that when people were possessed by the devil or something, they'd have to come here um, for the abbesses to try and exorcise the evil spirits. And so people would come to barking and they'd be barking mad. Some have said that actually trick-or-treating as we know it today in America, Halloween, originated here because you were sent here to be cured of the witchcraft. And what's the devil's number? 666. When was this first built? 666. Where is the Tower of London built on? All Hallows by the Tower. Yeah. All, All Hallows. Hallows. All Hallows by the Tower. Halloween church to say this is the start of Barking's lands. All Hallows by the Tower, the year 666, Barking Mad. <sighs> it happened here, Simon. It happened here. Who knows or dares to dream. And the dogs were barking in the night And the moon was shining bright When the devil took the number of the diggers This is the Gascoigne estate. It was named after the, the Gascoigne family. I think they used to have a big manor house around here back in the old days. But these days, well, I mean, it's calmed down a bit, but this is where the craze brought one of their, uh, one of their own. I think it was one of their guys who they'd broken out of prison. But then they brought him and they hid him out here before killing him. Why did they break him out of prison if they were just going to kill him? I don't quite get it. Um, yeah, but, well, maybe... Uh... But... Uh... But Maybe yeah. his punishment, because if he was in prison, then yeah. he doesn't get to die. Yeah, yeah, it's it. They wanted to get their own back on him. 
Anyway, this used to be so dangerous down here that when the police came down, they'd have to bring two cars, two police cars, to investigate a particular crime that had been reported because one police officer would have to mind the car to make sure that didn't get nicked or smashed in whilst the other police car, policeman went over to investigate the crime. Anyway, it's all much better these days. Is it, is it not named after Paul Gascoigne then? I believe not. <laughs> So here along Abbey Road, all along here, are the Ice House Court Studios, and they're set aside especially for artists. Hi. Hi, what, what's your name? Andy. As you can see, we do everything from glass and bits of metal work and stuff oh, yeah. like that. I mean, I'm an artist, but I'm not from Barking. Can anyone just rock up, or do you have well, to have yeah, certain anybody conditions? anybody can, actually. You, uh, you submit yourself through uh, Bow Arts. They check out that you are in fact an artist i was quite surprised when they did say yes andy <laughs> yeah. you're an artist <laughs> yeah. even i am an artist <laughs> so yeah we get these at a much discounted rate and we're able to operate in a place where we wouldn't otherwise be able they're to brilliant do so. i think that's fantastic let's go up no i'm curious about the different types of steps here oh i see oh no that's a seating area only you see that's for seating oh, right. and this is for walking I thought it was so it wouldn't discriminate toward giants, you know. <laughs> That's a giant yeah, like me to walk up. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tamara Froud. Um, that's me there. Hey! And um, this is part of the Barking Heritage Trail. And this site here was the old jute works. Jute. 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 So they used to produce the burlap sacks. Oh, what, well, for coffee and stuff? To yes, put coffee exactly, in? Oh, exactly. I know them, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your own artwork, though. You've done all that. Yes. That's very nice. Oh, that's very impressive. Beautiful. So that's a lady doing, uh, creating, weaving she a sack. Yes, she is, yes. Weaving oh. a jute sack. So, yeah, this is the, this is the Roding River. This is where the, the barking smack, I suppose, the barking fishing fleet, they used to go out and fish in the Thames over there. I think they've opened it up now. I think they're opening it up, like, so you can now sail up it again, I believe. I don't know. That looks like it opens. Barking fishermen were first mentioned in the 1300s. Fishing fleet was here for hundreds of years. So the nuns at the Abbey over there were quite good customers of these fishermen who went out. Sometimes they'd go all the way up to the, the North Sea and bring back things like cod and place. This is where the, the river roading sort of almost just down there it meets the Thames and uh, actually they're redeveloping that whole area there's quite a lot to see down there so we're gonna have to go there in the car we've just come down River Road here it's not exactly the most beautiful street Wharf Studios here these days it's the only fully run by women film studios in the country one of the things they did there was the Squid Game but the English version of Squid Game so they're kind of building Hollywood on Thames down here. And whilst the Wright brothers were making their planes and stuff, this is where the first biplanes were, were built in Britain, actually. Sir Frederick Handley Page, back in 1909, he started building planes here. They were the first public company to build aircraft. This whole area used to be a, a village called Creekmouth, Creekmouth. And there was a big flood in 1953 and it sort of destroyed most of it. But back in 1878, there was an even bigger disaster, which was the SS uh, Princess Alice, which was the biggest inland water disaster in British history, I believe. They were conducting these trips from London Bridge to Sheerness, advertising it as a moonlight trip along the Thames. But then, unfortunately, it collided with this coal collier and it sank, killing something like 700 people. No passenger list or headcount was ever made, so the exact number remains unknown. They died here in the part of the river where they used to throw out all the sewage, so it was a really grim end for them. And even some of those who were rescued later died from ingesting the contaminated water. It's a really quite a terrible tragedy. Now, it looks like it might be closed, I don't know, but normally you can go through here to have a look at the, the Creek Mouth Barrier. The, 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 um, there's a park we can go to. So this is the barrier that stops the area from flooding. They could have done with this back in 1953. That whole thing comes down, it's like 320 tonnes. 
I think that's that's where the road in river is it meets, the, meets Thames. the Thames. So that comes down and stops the Thames flooding the river, basically. I, the giant guillotine. Yeah, 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 yeah it's they a guillotine have, stuff. They have tides on the Thames. Yeah, the Thames is tidal. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure it is. If you knew of the princess, then take another beer out of the bridge and remember the souls in the moonlight cold on holiday. They're regenerating this whole area, and this building here was the switch building for the power station. They're hopefully bringing stuff from the Tate and National Portrait Gallery. It's going to be Tate barking. Yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful building. Is it King George V went in there to switch it on, <laughs> to open it up? He, sw he switched on the electrics and everything. And uh, it's where they filmed Batman. Some of the scenes from Batman were done in there. The other power station around here, the Barking Power Station, if that breaks down, apparently 80% of London's power disappears. So we'll have a big power cut. Down there is Barking Riverside Station. So you can just come here on the train. To Barcelona on Thames? Yeah. To come to the beach? <laughs> Yes. Should we go and have a little swim? Look, welcome to the Dagenham beaches. <laughs> this jetty over here, there were many of these. I think it's like 18 of them or something around Barking Dagenham. This one, I believe, was for the coal when they brought in the coal for the power station. And um, people would actually come down and sort of go swimming here. Back in the day, that one day off a year, the old East End used to come down here and have their day out. Where the turbines are, that's actually Ford's. So that's been here since 1931. Uh, and Henry Ford, Ford cars, Henry Ford, Ford. Henry Ford, he came yeah. down the railway line. He saw the Beckentree estate, the largest housing estate ever built in the country's history being built and thought, you know what? I'm gonna build the largest factory outside of Detroit. In its heyday, it was 58,000 people working in there with a supply chain over 100,000 people. It had its own ferry coming from Kent as well. And the boats still turn up today to deliver the cars, but that's where the free markets is going to be next door. You'll have Spitalfield, Smithfield and Billingsgate. and Billingsgate and all your socks including this young man's socks 90% of the socks in this country come from a place called Ewu in China and they come into Barking. Which reminds me of my favourite joke why does Edward Woodward have so many D's in his name? Why? Because if he didn't he would be called Iwawubu <laughs> <laughs> and if he got his socks from China he would get it would be Iwawubu with his socks from Iwu. <laughs> Very from the town centre, because you've got the river road in that comes down to the Thames, we're making it that you can walk all the way through. In the future, this will be Barcelona on Thames. That links into Mini Manhattan in the town centre or the road in Riviera if you want to join the two together. <laughs> This is the jetty that we saw when we went down to the river. Oh, that's the yeah. one that I said was for the power station that's jetty. That's right. This is the healthy new town, and this is the train station. This is what we call Barcelona on Thames. <laughs> so that's where we're going to have to take the National Portrait Gallery. Right. And so all this was wasteland of, of the dirty, redundant coal. And now it's going to be a lovely green community, both with public transport access, and we've got the boat, train, buses. You can see the greenery around what was once all industrial. Well, look, at, look at these. What's this, dry cleaning? General, so this is rubbish. Dry recycling, it's recycling dry and cleaning. Yeah, recycling and rubbish. This means that thousands of people don't need to have their rubbish collected anymore because they've got these new fangled, snazzy kind of, I don't know how it works. So basically, you open up that chute with your special pass. If you live here, you are allowed to put your rubbish inside there. Yeah. And then what it does is there's a massive tube with suction and it sucks it all down <laughs> and it all uh, sucks it all away so that you don't have to have a rubbish collection. You don't even have to have a bin. All underneath here and is where those chutes go all into a central sort of processing plant, I guess. And... <laughs> Are you stuck? Oh. <laughs> That's how the rubbish chutes work. And it pops out at the other end. <laughs> we want to go for a drink over there, don't we? The boathouse. Yeah. The stars were shining, the stars were bright, and the moon was crying all night. When lunch was on the Hi, Derek. Hello, how are you? <laughs> yeah, nice, no, hey, very well. This is a nice place you got here. How long have you been here? I've been here nearly seven years. Barbecues, we have DJs. 
the boaties that live along the river, they, this is their local, so they come here every day and see if I'm all right and have a pint and chat. <laughs> That's got to be nice in the summertime, hasn't oh, it? Oh, in the summertime, it's lovely, it's beautiful, you know, there's nowhere else you could be. Who's that? Who's that? That is me. Come on, well, show me, show me. Better, this is quite good, actually, isn't it? <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the moose. He's still got the moose. Cheers, Simon. Cheers, Louisa. Thanks for watching. Thanks if you enjoyed the videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you can head over to my website, jewelsguides.com, where you can buy my book, buy merchandise and all sorts of other things. And don't forget to come down to the boathouse here in Barking. See you next time, folks.